Hey guys, welcome back to the Overseers. It's Proelios once again with Nightwing. And we are going to talk quite briefly this week about our predictions for week 8 of the Overwatch League. Um, we are heading into our third week, third and final week of the June Joust qualifier matches. And we've got some really um, uh, interesting matchups lined, uh, matchups lined up for you. Especially considering how the first two weeks have gone. We had like one week that was full of upsets. And the last uh, week which was full of uh, debuts of new Overwatch League players. Uh, which we will touch upon as we go over some of our predictions. So we are going to try and keep it brief. Because we get that not all of the matches are that significant or that interesting to talk about. So we'll just be going over the matches where we have opposing predictions. Uh, and try and share up thoughts as to why we think that is. Uh, and yeah, if if you guys want to pitch in and uh, share your thoughts on the predictions, uh, or even your thoughts about the teams that you think will qualify for the June Joust playoffs, do let us know in the comment section. Um, shall we begin that wing? I haven't given you a chance to talk yet, sorry. Yeah, so... Like you said, we're just going to try and be a bit brief about this. Uh, this week is going to be a little bit interesting just because uh, this week we do have that uh, Hangzhou homestand where you're actually going to get to see these teams play on land, I think, for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is going to be really interesting because we've gone uh, gone by a year without any homestands. So I think that's going to be fun to look at. Uh, anyway, we should get into the predictions. Yeah, sure. So the first match where Nightwing and I had opposing winners is Uprising versus Gladiators. So I predicted a 3-2 win for Uprising and Nightwing went with a 3-1 for the Gladiators. Uh, do you want to share your thoughts on this first? Yeah, so I think my my reasoning behind this is just that, uh, you know, Atlanta was able to make it make a very strong case for themselves against uh, Houston and uh, Gladiators went and beat Atlanta. Uh, additionally, I think Atlanta's double shield looked like quite strong, uh, but Gladiators was still able to, you know, pretty much dismantle that like uh, quite well. I think Bird Ring's on fire. I think uh, like I'm not really seeing how uh, like pound for pound Boston is stronger than Gladiators at the moment, so I'm predicting this. Uh, why do you think it's going to be Boston taking it? So I do believe it's going to be close, as you can see from the prediction over here. I, I do think that the Gladiators um, are one of the one of the best teams in this meta in the NA region. Um, but also looking at uh, how Boston haven't dropped a single map uh, in the qualifiers so far. And just just the way in which they've been uh, synergizing with each other uh, with the addition of Gable Sheik, uh, I think they are looking really solid as a single unit. Uh, and even though the Gladiators do have some star talent in Kevsa and Birding especially, um, I think the, the synergy of the Uprising could just beat out that star potential. So that's why I think it's going to be the Uprising. It's, it's hard to... Um, not look at the sort of uh, you you can't exactly call it a golden stage, right? But some golden showings that the uprising have had so far. Um, should we move on? Yeah, let's let's go ahead. All right. So now we are moving on straight to the APAC region because we've had pretty similar predictions for any. So in the APAC region, we've got Charge versus Fusion. Which I think is going to be the Chargers game. Nightwing thinks it's going to be the Fusions. Although we both think it's a 3-2. Um, should I go first here? Uh, yeah. Sure, go okay. ahead. Alright, so... Um, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised with the charge. Um, have been surprised with the charge in the Junjas qualifiers. They look pretty good. And I think they've started looking better with Mike Haley... Uh, not being their staple hit scan on all the maps, I think they've they realized that he wasn't able to keep up with his uh, opposing numbers, and that's why they've made him turn him into a sort of a map specialist. 
I, I quite like that move because even Eileen isn't looking bad on hitscan. Choicer one's absolutely popping off on the Echo. Uh, and uh, even Mike Ailey started to put up some decent showings on the maps he's fielded on. So it, it's overall looking better for the charge uh, in this meta. And uh, well, the Fusion so far, they've just had two really disappointing showings. Uh, they've won none of their, like neither of their qualifier matches so far. And I I really need more from them to put faith in them this week. You can go. Okay, so here's what I think. I think um, if you remember correctly, the in during the playoffs uh, last year when uh, Justice were playing that uh, Hog Zarya comp, uh, Fusion were playing something very similar to what is being played right now in the sense that it was like a rush, uh, like a rush comp, but with the dive tanks. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this, and that is what uh, the top teams seem to be playing at the moment. Uh, I mean, if you would consider Shock and Dallas to be the top teams at the moment, which which I think is pretty fair. Yeah. Uh, so Fusion are well practiced on that kind of thing. Obviously, uh, Saro was the main tank at that time and not Mano, but still some of the other players have a decent idea of how that comp works. So I think they are in a good position to kind of uh, adapt into this kind of meta. And uh, I don't know, I think I just still need to see a bit more from Guangzhou uh, other than uh, beating out NYXL. Uh, I think it was more of uh, Fusion having an off day. Uh, and I think they definitely can bounce back in uh, this kind of scenario. That said, uh, they haven't actually won a map this month. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's a tough sell to say that uh, they'll definitely win. That's why I put it as a 3-2. So yeah, they've not won a single map, is it? I think they've won maps. They haven't won matches. Did didn't they get three would twice? I don't think so. Uh, maybe it was a three one in one of yeah, the matches. Yeah, might be. Either way, the fusion have looked pretty silent compared to how they looked in the the main melee. That's the main takeaway from this, I guess. Um, all right, let's move on to the next APAC match, which we disagree on which is hunters versus dynasty it's right here so nightwing thinks it's a 3-2 for the hunters i think it's 3-2 for the dynasty um you can go first here nightwing uh i i think uh while fitz definitely looks very good on the hit scan at the moment uh i i'm just not very convinced that uh soul is in that great of a position i think gesture is still getting caught out way too much because they keep forcing the road hog. Uh, and uh, it, it seems like Soul is winning despite him being on the road hog instead of uh, because of being in, on the road hog. Uh, so I think that's a major weakness that I think uh, Hunters have had enough w- time to watch game tape on. And uh, I think they're competent enough to kind of take advantage of that. Uh, and Soul is just is quite often quite shaky. so. That's why I'm going with the Hunters. That said, uh, definitely if the DPS do show up and uh, Gesture is just caught out a little bit less, Soul can take this. Uh, and that's why it's reflected uh, as such in our predictions. Yeah, I, I think the, the matchup I'm most interested to see in the series is Leave versus Fitz. Because both of these scan players have been popping off left, right and center. Uh, I don't think anyone has been uh, unimpressed with any of their showings this month. And uh, just just seeing them on the battlefield, just getting picks one by one by one, is, it's such a pleasure. Like, it's it's really like awesome as a fantasy. And uh, matchups like these, I think, are what all of us OWL fans live for. Um, but yeah, just like, what do you call it? Um, I'll just stop being a fan and start being an analyst again. Uh, I think the Dynasty win this one out because uh, based on the compositions they are, they are playing, they're trying to rely more on uh, their team's individual strengths rather than uh, like the, the most synergy they could possibly have in this meta. Uh, and I think for, f- like, how do you say it? For the individual talent that this team has, it's it's a very viable strategy. Uh, obviously, with the exception of Gestures Road Hog, I don't want to see him play Hog ever again until the Junjao stands at least. Um, he's he just fed a lot of fight charge, I think. 
and uh, just leaving him aside uh, the teams look pretty solid i think marvel has been looking really good on the sigma uh, not so much on the zarya but i think they'll have enough uh, like game tape by now to realize that his sigma is what truly will bring them value uh, and it also works well against sit scan which is like what this meta is still kind of about right uh, the tra- traditional hit scan heroes like um, you've got McCree, you've got Ash, you've got Widow and Soldier. Sigma's just really good at shutting them out, uh, prevent preventing them from getting good angles onto their team. So, um, yeah, I think if if the hunters just have some subliminal level of synergy, they can take this match. But I just have more faith in Soul's individual skill. I feel uh, like the the Sigma will not be as relevant because it seems to me at least like the dominant comp is going to be this uh, Ash Echo Moira Lucio. I mean the Reaper Echo Moira Lucio that's being run. Uh, but if it does come down to that, I think Marvel can definitely put up a strong performance. Uh, that said, I think uh, teams are going to look at uh, this comp being played, the the kind of dive rush thing. And in that scenario, I think Jester definitely has the opportunity to play Winston quite well. Uh, I think Profit is going to struggle a little bit to carry just because uh, obviously Tracer is not in. Uh, just a few things, I think. I think Chengdu is still rounded a bit better and uh, they're less likely to randomly drop a map just because they want to play that hog. Uh, so in, in that sense, I think just because of the most the kind of stable nature you could expect out of Chengdu, which is a very strange thing to say, actually, about the Chengdu Hunters. Uh, I, I think they, they can take it. Mm-hmm. We shall see, we shall see. Um, let's move on to the next match, which is not a match that we disagree on, but just one that I think is going to be super fun to watch, which is Valiant versus Fusion. Because I think this, for once, is going to be like a toilet bowl with the Philadelphia Fusion in it. Because these two, these are like the only two winless teams in the June Joust in the APAC region. Um, and, uh, like, I mean, Fusion still wins out, obviously, because they are overall just a superior team. Um, but it's just funny that they are at kind of, kind of the bottom of the meta, right? Um, still, I think the reason Fusion are here is not because they are like a garbage team. We obviously know that they have a lot of skill, but their, like, their pop-off potential has sort of been, um, missing, right? During the June Joust. Whereas you look at the Valiant, they are just, like, plain bad. Yeah, they've got barely anything to, like, to show for that I'm in the Overwatch League. And uh, it's just disappointing where they are right now. But I still think they can get a map. Um, just because Crystal, Molandran, and Shocheng sometimes have some good moments. But other than that, yeah, just Fusion went out. How do you feel about this Nightwing? I, I think it's... It's a bit much to call it the toilet bowl, honestly. I just uh, like the meme. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's still just going to be Philly dunking on them. Uh, I think two matches is way, way too small of a sample size to call anyone that bad, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Fusion have had some time to watch some game take. Uh, the players have had time to understand the meta. So I think that they're, they're going to be in a better position to... I mean, play really well, I think. Um, but I mean, yes, theoretically, for if you take uh, the June Joust in a vacuum, yes, this is a toilet bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, then. Just finally, I just want to get your thoughts on which teams you think are going to make it to the June Joust playoffs. Uh, so remember, guys, there are going to be two teams from the NA region and two teams from APAC who are going to go to Hawaii and then just play some really fun playoff games. Uh, so let's do NA first, Nightwing. Which two teams do you think have a, have the best shot from NA? Okay, so I think someone that's uh, almost on a lock, I think, for the June Joust would be the San Francisco Shock. I mean, they've beat Dallas, who was the previous the winner of the May Melee, and no other team is really looking uh, like they can quite contest the Shock. I mean... Yes, they're not infallible. They've, you know, dropped maps here and there. But um, and that Dallas Shock series was actually really close. I think it could have gone either way. Uh, 
if if not for a few micro plays that the shock was doing better so i would definitely put the shock up there and uh, after that i think uh, you'd think of many teams between maybe the gladiators dallas and outlaws potentially uh, also atlanta kind of but then gladiators will beat out atlanta i think i'll go with the gladiators here uh, just because i think they look uh, the strongest and burdening is on fire at the moment uh, but i think many other teams could take that uh, second seed i think shock should be the number 1 seed here yeah i i do think that shock is going to make it um i don't necessarily think they are the best team like i don't have a clear idea of which out which team out definitely call the best just because of how back and forth some of these matchups have been but i do believe that the shock are one of the best teams right now uh and i would probably go with the outlaws with them i think um they've set up some really smart rotations on especially the main tank and main support roles which is kind of weird cuz usually these two roles are the most stable on any roster but they've been able to make it work uh, right and uh, also i think dante is making a case for best echo in the league at this point he's he's been so impressive like obviously he's reached 4.7k with echo on ladder which is i don't think anybody else has been able to do that so far uh but the guys just cracked and i have a lot of faith in his carry potential and i think along with just like a really stable and uh supportive team he's going to be able to um like you know win uh win through the single elimination qualifier bracket and make it to hawaii um and the shock yeah they had a pretty good resurgence uh which they sort of announced while playing against the fuel uh i didn't watch the entire match i'll admit but i did see like uh parts of it and uh, i like it's really good to see the shocks dps finally finding their groove glister was finally able to have some pop off moments um we saw nero putting in some better showings on echo uh and uh, yeah i think the team is starting to get back to that sort of um top tier position that they are known to be in right uh and yeah i think we can expect some really stiff competition for both these teams i think the knockouts there are so many good teams at the moment that i think the knockouts are going to be really stiff even uh, teams that are just a slightly a uh, bit behind from that a tier like the florida mayhem and potentially i think even the washington justice if uh, you know winston diva comps are being played i think th- they can have kind of a resurgence many of these teams can uh, kind of contend even the boston uprising i think many of these teams are in that position to really uh, cre- create some uh, upsets so i think uh, really anyone that's in those knockouts will be going through the gauntlet in na and uh, it'll have to be a very deserved uh, win to you know pass through all of those uh, challenges and actually enter the juniors yeah for sure uh let's quickly talk about the apac teams as well um oh. yeah tell me which teams do you think are going to make it so i think uh, probably it, it should just be the hangzhou spark and uh, shanghai dragons i don't really see uh, the other teams being quite at that level i think maybe seoul or chengdu can create some kind of upset and uh you know get through uh, but i think uh, logically you'd probably just go with the dragons and uh, spark yeah i couldn't agree more like we all know how good the shanghai dragons are uh, they have been super consistent in this meta as well uh, and uh, flatter and live have just been like supremely good uh, and also the hangzhou spark which actually ended up beating the shanghai dragons 3-0 uh, in the first week of the june jazz qualifiers uh they are looking really good especially with shy on the hit scan there are some rumors of uh, godsby leaving the team uh there are still rumors but like it makes sense i think nightwing and i are both in agreement that shy is a much better hit scan aren't we yeah i think godsby is probably uh, there's not much space for him honestly i think on the team anymore uh i think he might actually look really good on uh, the charge i think they are 
they could definitely use a player like him uh, but those are still rumors so that remains to be seen yeah i mean i think hit scan rumors are just going around right now with uh, especially with the dm also being rumored to retire um but yeah again these are just rumors we don't really know what's going on but it's just um something we wanted to mention right during the episode but yeah definitely he sparked and dragons in contention uh, none of these other teams are looking uh, either like just plain good enough or consistent enough uh, in my books to make it there so yeah i think it's going to be spark and dragons and uh, that's that uh, do let us know in the comments which teams you think will make it uh, to the june joust and why um we we'll, we are super interested to read your opinions especially because this is such a um it it's such an unpredictable meta and i think it's overall an unpredictable season of the overwatch league right we are seeing so many different back and forth games like um you rarely see matches with like one team just getting stomped so it's just uh, a really fun experience i i think this is one of the best seasons of the overwatch league so far what do you think nightwing yeah i definitely think i think uh, coming into the season even during our uh, roster review discussions uh, we were quite convinced that this is probably this was probably going to be the most competitive season of the overwatch league yes. just because so many teams have picked up these superstar players and uh, so many new superstar rookies have uh, popped up in uh, recent times that uh, many many teams especially in na i think this time not so much in apac i think apac uh, still has kind of a hierarchy i think na has so much good competition uh that it's really exhilarating to watch mm-hmm. uh yeah and i think that's going to be it for this episode do we have anything more to add nightwing uh we... would you like to go over some of the rookie showings that we've had oh yeah sure let's do it i think uh, we should probably talk about aspire first yeah so aspire comes in uh, replaces hisu uh for the toronto defined because i believe he's having some health issues with uh, covid uh alongside logics he's looked quite good in my opinion i think uh, he, he's showing against the shock was not that strong but in their other match definitely uh, aspire was really popping off and even uh, in the match uh, against the shock i think aspire did have some good moments uh but uh, he's he's looking at a good replacement uh, obviously hisu is still very much uh, i believe a much higher caliber of player but uh, for someone that's instantly joined the team and he's a western player he's not even speaking the same language as them uh, i think uh, it's going quite great for aspire i think this just goes to sort of prove the point that uh, it's kind of easier to integrate a hit scan into a new team uh, compared to any other role because uh, like what's most demanded from you is mechanical skill right you you generally aren't the one to make call outs as a hit scan player unless you're playing sombra probably but um, yeah aspire just had some great showings on uh, especially the widowmaker and the hanzo like uh, if you remember he had that amazing hanzo 5k on rialto uh, just above the first point That's so good. Like, I'm super excited to watch. He's a really good um, sort of. He's a very entertaining player to watch. I think. Uh, if you have the time, just go watch him play in the replay viewer. He doesn't always pop off, but uh, he's like. I think he's a very clinical player. Uh, he takes up some really the classic angles as some of these heroes' classic positions. He's exactly where you want him to be, but you still can't beat him because his aim is just that good. like that's what i at least saw when i watched him yeah uh, yeah on the on the other end we have uh, changsik who uh, has honestly not looked that great uh, i think anyone playing overwatch fantasy will be quite disappointed <laughs> seeing his score <laughs> because he played every map and still uh, wasn't really able to do that much i think he was incredibly low impact and the i mean the entire team was struggling um especially in that brutal match against atlanta which was the third fastest uh, match in overwatch league history i believe uh where they could just not get any kills on atlanta i believe 
there's like two or three players on Atlanta that played the entire match with like two deaths. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, rough start for uh, Changsik after Sherlock's retirement. Uh, hopefully, things will look a little bit better. But uh, honestly, looking at their schedule, I think it's going to be a very tough ask because uh, for Vancouver, their their upcoming matches are versus Shock and Dallas. So yeah, it, it's going to be really really rough. I think maybe maybe next tournament, you know, go next. Uh, but yeah, so those are pretty much the rookies that we've seen uh, this past week. Yeah, again, like. You you can see the difference that like compared to signing a hit scan which is which was like relatively easier and that's by the way another reason why I'm excited to see Pine join the Dallas Fuel, um but like you change the main tank of a team and you completely change the whole team dynamic right because the main tank's calling all of the engagements all of the rotations all of the pathing so Changsek comes in and I think the the whole team environment completely changes and that's why they get super confused and get rolled. In their first ever match or first ever week playing together, essentially. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we want to discuss, right? Am I missing anything else? No, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I think it's going to be really interesting to see that uh, LAN event. I think it's it's going to be like a hybrid LAN event because the Korean teams are still going to be playing online uh, since obviously the event is being held in China. But some matches like... Uh, I think Chengdu versus Spark and Valiant versus Spark are going to be uh, like live. So really interesting stuff after a long uh, drought of only online matches for the Overwatch League. Um, but apart from that, I don't think we're missing anything. Yeah, I, even I'm really excited to see some live events. I, I've always found OWL to be way more exciting when there are people watching it live, even though we are just watching it from home. Um, it the the crowd kind of gets you hyped up as well, right? You can hear the in game audio, you can hear the casters, and in the background you can also hear the sort of um, excitement and adrenaline the crowd is feeling. So that also gets you a little more thrilled and a little bit more um, anxious to see what's gonna happen next. So we've been missing that so far, but I think it's it's high time we got back into it. I just hope that there's like uh, enough. Uh, precautions taken and enough social distancing followed that the events are taken like they are conducted in a really safe manner right that's that's the most important thing if they don't compromise on health everything's going to be fine so yeah let's I think round things off then Um, thanks a lot for listening guys we really appreciate it do remember to do all the usual YouTube stuff like comment share subscribe uh, and yeah, like like we said before, definitely comment down below whom you think is going to qualify for the June Joust. Um, it's going to be a really interesting topic to discuss and we'd love to have a discussion in the comments if you're up for it. So thanks a lot for listening. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.